All right, everybody, welcome back to the Fragrance Fraternity. I'm excited to make another video for you today. I checked today and we officially have over 360 members in the fraternity. That is crazy. My mind is blown. I started this channel maybe about two-ish months ago and the support has been unreal. I've been enjoying chatting with you guys, talking about fragrances, giving some suggestions, info, hearing what you guys are wearing in the day. Love chatting it up with you guys. You guys are a bunch of positive, energetic, beautiful smelling people, my kind of people. So I'm really enjoying this and I hope you are too. Hope I can keep bringing you more informative, entertaining stuff. So let's go. Today we're talking about your atypical summer fragrance list. So you might be going through some fragrance lists online, trying to pick something new up. You want to be smelling great this summer, I understand. So I'm going to give you some that you may not be coming across in some of the other videos out there, ones that you may not typically hear about when it comes to summer fragrances. Let's go. Let's get this started with one that I recently did a review on. This is Lacoste Essential, a great sporty fragrance. A really nice kind of easy going fragrance that works in a lot of situations really good during the day really good during the high heat great for the gym to me it smells like similar to like a low dc but cleaned up not as sharp not as many rough edges kind of a similar rindiness to a light blue intense however that one does go more aquatic and soapy whereas this one stays a little bit more sporty if you're looking for something that's just gonna work every day, no matter how hot it gets, Lacoste Essential is one that nobody hardly mentions anymore, but still is really appealing, really nice fruitiness in the beginning, a nice kind of lemony fruitiness in the beginning, and it just stays kind of really sporty and really appealing throughout. Been wearing this one more and more after I did my first review, and I've really enjoyed it. It's, good, it's a good price uh, for value, proposition this one's been popping up at ross lately so i figured i'd mention it lacoste essential check that one out if you can and if you want to get something really nice and sporty for the summer let's keep it going with a blue fragrance one of my personal favorites salvatore ferragamo aqua Sensiale blue now in the price range that this sits this might be the best between $30 to $40 fragrance. I'm not exactly sure what it's going for right now, but if you're a big fan of blue fragrances and you're looking for a new blue fragrance that not every single person's gonna be rocking, this is gonna be one that sets you apart. It's got a really nice maturity while still maintaining that mass appeal blue fragrance DNA. It's really good for a more, someone looking for a more mature, upscale, kind of classier blue fragrance that isn't super expensive. This is something that you could wear as a business professional, something that you could wear when you're trying to make the sale, when you're trying to make a good first impression. This is gonna be it right here. Great performance, really nice bottle design. The cap uh, is very strong. Uh, that's one thing I always think about. You can really hear it click into place. If you want a blue fragrance with a richness and a depth, a little bit different than like a YSLY EDP, which is really, sweet and really youthful really playful this is going to be kind of opposite that where it's more mature more put together not as playful just more straight about business with aqua essenziale blue really been enjoying that one ever since i got it it's going to be great for this summer next one we have on this list is from azaro it's from the chrome line this is chrome legend a little bit different bottle style here chrome legend this is a 1.4 ounce that I got for about $20. And let me say, this does not smell like a $20 fragrance. It smells probably like a $40 to $50 fragrance. Now it does smell synthetic. However, it doesn't smell cheap synthetic. Sometimes just because something smells synthetic doesn't mean it, it smells cheap necessarily, but it is possible for both of those things to be true at the same time. This one is synthetic smelling, but it does not smell cheap to me. It's a nice tea-based fragrance, so it's going to be a little bit different of an approach than a lot of the fragrances that are currently on the market because of that tea-based approach. It's got a little bit of orange in there, a little bit of musk, and just from smelling it, what I really pick up is the florals and the metallic, the metallic edge with this fragrance. I enjoy this one because it's a flanker that really does pay homage to the original with the original chrome. You still get that metallic kind of floral 
freshness from the original chrome, especially uh, with that tea and the way that it comes across with the musk. There are no technical flowers or floral notes in here as far as what I've read, but if I just had to describe it, the floral notes is really what's prominent to me here, along with a little bit of that metallic vibe from the original chrome. You get really good performance on this one and good projection. I think this one's going to be a big compliment puller as well. I haven't really worn it out and about this that much. I picked this one up recently uh, because they had only had the bigger bottle styles and I tend to go for the smaller ones. And then I happened across this little cute guy, this little 1.4 ounce banger. So I decided to go for it and I'm really happy with it. I've worn it a couple times and very, very appealing, aromatic, my kind of fragrance. Pretty sharp in the opening, pretty abrasive, pretty in your face, pretty powerful, which is what I like. But if that's not your style, just be aware of that. Chrome Legend, one that rarely gets brought up anymore. The next one in this list is from the House of Banana Republic. This is Cypress Cedar. So this is a very mature, upscale kind of uh, fragrance for someone that doesn't want to come across too youthful or too playful, someone that means business perhaps an older gentleman or perhaps someone who is ready to just get down to work and not gonna be playing any games whatsoever. You're getting really nice cedar wood here. You're getting a nice bitter orange note in the beginning. It does have some comparisons to the original Terra de Hermes. However, I actually prefer this one over Terra de Hermes. Now, Terra de Hermes, uh, Terra de Hermes O Intense Vetiver, that's a different story. I really love that one. But as far as just the original Terra de Hermes, I prefer this one. This is another one that kind of smells synthetic, but does not smell cheap. This smells like a $60 fragrance, and I think I paid $25 for this 100 ml. Beautiful, beautiful woody fragrance mixed with some of the citrus from the orange that comes across, as well as the cypress, obviously, in there as well. Definitely worth checking out if you happen to see this one out and about. Cypress Cedar, it's in contention for my favorite in the line. Really nice blend really smells elegant really a great bang for your buck purchase you're getting a lot more than what you pay for as far as quality goes with cypress cedar and it is a little bit on the more dense thicker side so i don't know if i would really consider this a summer fragrance but it would work well enough it does have enough freshness to where i'd say that you can use it in the summer possibly don't wear this one on the super high days maybe more at night but to each their own, I think even in the high heat, this would come across really nicely, really mature, really masculine, woody, with a little bit of, of the zestiness of the orange in there. Just great stuff. Let's keep it going now to one that is probably the oldest release on here. 212 Men by Carolina Herrera. This has been a, this is a forgotten gem. It really is. It's a green grassy type of a fragrance. Again, not one that is tech as a technical summer fragrance, but in the high heat, I've worn this before and it comes across beautifully. It's a green grassy fragrance, but it has uniqueness as well. And if you know about 212 and you've smelled it before, you know what I'm talking about. There aren't really many other fragrances that I'm aware of that smell like 212 men. They really do have a unique DNA with this one. And this is a great jumping off point. They have a lot of flankers in this line, so this is a good starting point. A lot of the flankers, admittedly, they don't smell like the original 212, but yeah. Nice cap here. Really nice magnetic cap with all the uh, Carolina Herrera 212 line-esque fragrances. Um, green with some nice freshness and nice aromatic touch to it. Beautiful stuff here. Not too expensive either. I enjoy that one. It may not be for everybody, but you may find that you really like it. This one's a little bit more divisive because it is unique. So let me go to one now that's going to be, I think, more mass appealing than 212 as far as a green fragrance goes. And this is from Lucky Brand. This is Lucky, Lucky You. I think that's what this one's called. Yeah, Lucky You. Lucky You from the Lucky brand. It's also a green grassy fragrance, but it does it in a very different way. This one reminds me of the mid 2000s. So if you wanna have a little bit of a nostalgia and you wanna remember the times of those mid 2000s and maybe you had some really good times back in those days, you can bring yourself back with Lucky You. Soapy and grassy, those are the two main things that you're gonna smell here. 
decent performance. I tried it out on my skin yesterday because I knew I was gonna make this video and include it. And I got about four hours of to where I could really, I could smell it and it was quite pronounced. So pretty good. And especially considering the price, I think this was like $25 for this 100 ml. It smells great. It doesn't smell cheap. It does smell a little bit more on the youthful kind of teenager side, but I like youthful fragrances and I like wearing stuff that makes me feel young and whatever, like a kid, I guess. But this one is, it's excellent. So check this one out. If you happen to stumble across a lucky store and you stop in there and they have this, you can usually, they have a bottle usually that you can just pick up and smell. And the women's version of this one is really good too. Um, I was with my mom when we were just hanging out at the mall and I was trying this one. She tried the women's one and I smelled that one. I really liked that one too, but lucky you, a really easygoing grassy green fragrance, really good for the summer. It's got enough freshness to make it through those high heat days. Let's keep it going with a Hollister fragrance. This is Hollister Wave 2. So this one has most notably a similarity to Invictus Aqua. This one is a little bit more creamy a little bit more tropical. So if you enjoy tropical fragrances with a sort of thickness with a creamy vibe to it, this is gonna be right up your alley. It's a very fresh fragrance still, first and foremost. So don't think that this is like a creamsicle bomb, it's not. It just has a, a bit of that in there. And also it has some sweetness from the fruitiness but it's not overly sweet and overly cloying to where you wouldn't be able to wear it in the summer. This is a summer fragrance. It was made to be worn in the summer and you can tell by that nice aquatic bottle style and the look and what it's also trying to emulate is a summer fragrance. So there are a lot of iterations of Invictus Aqua out there. When I want something with a little bit of richness with that creamy facet, I go for Hollister Wave 2. Decent performance. You're gonna get two hours where it's really pumping off your skin. After that, it does come a little bit closer. And after the four hour mark, it's, it's pretty much gone, but $20 for 100 ml. So just, just apply more and don't be afraid to overspray that one. Okay, we got one, two, three more. The number seven spot or the number three spot, however you wanna look at it. I don't rank them by how much I like them. I just do 10. Club Dinner We Milestone from Our Moth, a clone of Melissa Imperial by Creed. Now, this comes across a little bit thicker, a little bit more synthetic, a little bit, dare I say, darker than the actual Melissa Imperial. Real Melissa Imperial, the one that I smelled, the current formulation. It's got a certain airiness to it. It's got a certain lightness to it. So this harkens back more so to the original formulation of Melissine Imperial, where it was a little bit darker, richer, deeper. So that, that's kind of what this one emulates more so than the, than the current formulations. This bottle style may or may not be for you. Um, it is flashy, it's out there. It does lean a little bit feminine, so just be aware of that. Um, but you know, with these arm offs, they do a great job of cloning a lot more expensive fragrances. You're going to pay one tenth of the price and you're going to get very, very close to Melissa and Puriel. This one is quite synthetic. And I would say if you spray it on, just give it a minute or two, just to settle down before you go in for that whiff and you're going to have a better time. You might just, uh, overload your nose if you go in right away with this one, with that alcohol blast, but the quality is not bad. It, this was a $30 fragrance. I would not spend more. I would not pay $50 or more for this, but for $30, you get a lot of liquid. And if you really like Milsim Imperial, there really aren't that many good clones of it besides this. There's Unforgivable by Sean John, and there's also Love and Luck by Ed Hardy. And I think both of those are one or two steps behind this. So as far as an affordable take on Millicent Imperial, strictly Millicent Imperial without other things melded in there, it's going to be your best bet. And a really, really stunning fragrance for the summer, like a salty watermelon type smell. Very, very appealing, very attention grabbing. It does have some sweetness here mixed with the saltiness. Um, 
if you've ever had one of those Hispanic candies where they have, they have like a watermelon lollipop and they have the spices over and you kind of got to lick through the spices to get to that watermelon lollipop sugary part. That's what this one reminds me of. Imagine eating that candy and you're just getting to that watermelon sugary part after having eaten all those spices. A lot, some of you people are going to have no idea what I'm talking about, but all the Californians watching and anybody familiar with those candies knows exactly what I'm talking about. Um, not sure what the actual term is for those, but whatever. Milestone. Awesome for the summer. Two more. Here we go. This next one is from the house of Mont Blanc. This is called Star Walker. I've been seeing this one popping up a lot lately. Star Walker is a really, really beautiful freshy. It's got some similarities to Versace Mano Fresh. So if you like Mano Fresh and you are looking for something maybe in that style, this is going to be pretty similar to that. The thing that makes this really unique is that it has a bamboo note as the woody accord. So you don't really see that too often. And it does give it that spa-like vibe, the relaxing sort of bamboo smell that you may associate with a spa or uh, someplace like that. The performance on here is not good. Sadly, the performance is bad, but this is a great fragrance to just wear around the house. This is one that I like to keep a bottle of in my car when I finish a long day of work, just driving back, something that refreshes you, something that will uplift you, but you don't necessarily need it to be a beast mode performer, something that is just gonna maybe be for your car ride or for the next hour or two, something that you could definitely wear before going to bed. Um, because of that relaxing nature and also it's not gonna be so much of a performer to where it's gonna bother you if you're trying to fall asleep. I think that's what they actually even originally made this for was before bed use. Um, so if you enjoy something like a Versace Mano Fresh, you probably will enjoy this one too. I actually prefer this one over Mano Fresh because it does bring a little bit more character to the table and I just prefer the overall scent profile over Mano Fresh here. But just be aware of the performance. Don't don't buy this expecting to get some kind of beast mode performer because it's not that. But the fragrance itself is very nice, very fresh, really good for high heat summer days. So Star Walker. Last one on this list. I talked about this one a little bit, but it's worth bringing up again because it is great value for your money. Hollister Canyon Escape. I've seen this one popping up a lot. I like this cap, even though it's not that heavy. It does feel like wood, so that's enjoyable, and it's clicks into place pretty nicely. This is a clone of Creed Aventus. However, I would say if I had to compare it to one fragrance, this smells more like Mont Blanc Explorer than actual Aventus. So just be aware of that. But you can get this at a better price than Explorer and it basically smells the exact same. I've tried both and I could not really tell a difference between them. I'd say Explorer gives you slightly better performance, slightly but just dial up the sprays with this one because this 100 ml cost me, I think $20. So it doesn't smell like a cheap fragrance. It is a little bit synthetic, but it doesn't smell cheap. If you enjoy Explorer, if you enjoy Ventus, this is, a, this is gonna be right up your alley. Maybe you don't wanna use your whole bottle of Ventus and you just wanna substitute something that's more affordable in the meantime. Hollister Canyon Escape. The freshness in here is gonna be excellent for summer. Works really well in the heat. It's gonna create a nice sillage for you. This one's a big compliment puller. I know a lot of people get a lot of positive attention from these Aventus style fragrances. Now, admittedly, Aventus style fragrances are not my personal favorite, something that I reach for, but I do think they're good and I have a lot of respect for them and I do enjoy smelling them. And I understand that this could be a really, really good fragrance option for somebody in the summer that's looking for something that's gonna work in the heat. So, Hollister Canyon Escape. Let me know if you guys have any questions about any of the ones that I talked about today. I'd be happy to answer them. And let me know what is a fragrance that you like to wear during the summer that may be not something that is always typically recommended. Something like under the radar. What's your under the radar summer fragrance for this summer that you're looking forward to wearing? Thanks so much for your support. It blows my mind how quickly we're growing. I'm going to do everything I can to keep this channel strong, to keep the videos coming, to keep the info coming, to keep the spirits high, high as they can be while we smell great together. Thanks so much for watching, spending some of your day with me. Till next time, everybody, take care.